So how do you, when you have patients that come to you and they're having difficulty sleeping? Well, without doing hypnosis, I'm always going to mm. take a good inventory on their lifestyle to see what they might be doing. They might be inadvertently acting as an impediment to them sleeping well. So what's, a, some, what's bad? Yeah, well, there's a lot of things people are doing. First of all, if you're eating late at night, that's not a good thing, especially meat. Animal fat will take about three hours to digest. So if you want to fall asleep at 11 p.m., mm. you should finish eating by 11 or forego the meat and eat some beans and seeds or nuts and vegetables or, you know, or fruits, something like that. Uh, caffeine will take 8 to 12 hours to metabolize, so having any of that in the afternoon is still going to be in your system when you wish to fall asleep. 8 to 12 hours. Um, we're also, many are sedentary, and by not moving every day, your body is not going to sleep as deeply. I mean, early humans would do three hours a day of exercise, and they felt great all day, and then they slept deeply. And then a big mistake that we're making is that our, we're really exposed to light too late at night. I'm always asking every client, what are they doing one hour before they want to go to sleep? Right. To see if they're doing anything that's inadvertently having an impact. And many, about 90% or more, are looking at screens, a computer screen or a TV, you know. What happens, though, is that light, an hour before you go to sleep, mm -hmm. it's going to stimulate your pineal gland and suppress melatonin. So it's tricking the brain to thinking it's the afternoon when it's been dark for many hours. So for 20 years of my practice, I would mm. always recommend to anybody who wants to fall asleep faster and sleep deeper, one hour before you go to sleep would be a better time to listen to music, listen to an audio book or a podcast or mm. a TED talk without looking at the screen, or read, but illuminate what you're reading with a candle or a soft book light so your eyes aren't taking any light in. Makes a lot of sense, right. And to expand on that, eight years ago or so, I discovered this company called Photonic Developments that took the science and the research that revealed it's just the blue wavelength within the light spectrum that stimulates the pineal gland suppressing melatonin. Oh, really? They make these natural sleep aids. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing I even sell in my entire practice. I have one, both of them with me now. One is a simple amber-colored light bulb. And what color does that turn when you put it on? Well, it's like an orange, amber-colored. Okay. There's no blue pigment coming through. And this would be the only light you'd want on one hour before you want to go to sleep to illuminate anything you want to see. Okay, so you can read by this. Fantastic. My, uh, our daughters, uh, since they've been born, the only light that they know of close to bedtime, probably half an hour before they, we go uh, get them to bed, is this kind of light. Wow. So we would read to them with this light. Uh, my wife would breastfeed our, when they were babies uh, with this light. When they go into the bathroom, this light would be one of the lights yes. they'd have on when they brush their teeth just before they go to bed. We would bring this wherever we go on vacations. Mm. And then they also make these glasses that if you had to look at a computer or a TV or you need a light on to navigate your home mm -hmm. one hour before you want to go to sleep, you could wear these glasses and they'll block the blue wavelength and you'll maximize melatonin and you'll fall asleep faster and you'll sleep deeper. And but they work. That seems so amazingly simple mm -hmm. to find the problem mm -hmm. and very scientific. You can't fall asleep with the serotonin and then you get something to block and they found out it was just the blue light. Yep. That's wonderful. How do people get these? Well, in my practice, I loan them to okay. my clients first. And the company sells them for uh, $80 or $9 to get shipped. I will sell them only after my clients borrow them until I see them a week and a half later for their second session, and then they tell me they want it. About two out of three people keep them. And of the one out of three that don't, uh, it's usually because they are just going to modify their behavior and just not look at screens. That's the takeaway they get from my conversation with them, okay. or they'll use that bulb uh, instead to, to read. But they work. I've been using these things myself for, for about eight years now. And uh, if I'm going to add new content to my website to the last possible minute, I have those glasses on, and I'm able to just shut off the computer and go right to sleep. And I know what would happen if I didn't have it on. I would be working later. And it's a mistake that so many people are doing. And they don't even understand that they could fall asleep faster, they could sleep deeper. Even if they're not presenting with that challenge, they're not sleeping as efficiently. They're never going to sleep as deeply. Yeah. And it, it's kind of like foreplay for sleep. You know, <laughs> you, want, you want to just allow yourself to have yeah. melatonin flow naturally. And it, it's yeah. a good thing. Very, very fascinating. And so, um, I know that, you know, when you're younger, you need more sleep, and when you're older, you don't need as much. What are the numbers? Okay, well, um, infants, yeah. you know, are going to need a lot of sleep, okay? So they might need 
12 hours sleep at night, uh, maybe it's consolidated, maybe it's not, and an additional hour and a half or so. Mm. When they become a toddler, they're gonna still, they're gonna need 12 hours, which could be 10 and a half a night, and then an hour and a half nap in the middle of the day. Okay. That works for a lot. Uh, once you get to the age of around six, six, or maybe even five, depending on the individual, you'll need 10 and a half hours. Still, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, teenagers, well, around 11 or 12, they can, they'll get by with nine hours. And typically, adults, until, they're, well, until you're 24 years old, you're mm. still gonna need nine hours. Adults past 24 frequently need nine hours, mm. but we typically need seven and a half hours after that. And we're not getting it, we're, we're, we're just not getting it. It's just, um, it makes, I can imagine it makes everybody's life less efficient. Oh yeah. Because you're not, you're not at your optimal capacity. Employers are getting this now, and when I do my corporate wellness seminars, mm -hmm. I'm only impressing upon the HR department and the management there that whatever you could do to allow your workforce to come in better rested, it's gonna be a wonderful thing for you. First of all, they're gonna be healthier, yeah. so they're gonna have lower health care costs and premiums. It's gonna be less absenteeism. They're gonna get sick less. If they get sick, they're gonna, they're gonna recover faster because they're gonna have a stronger immune system. And the smart companies are being flexible now. Like, they're going to ask their, some of their employees, like, where are you commuting from? How long does it take you to get in? Uh, I know the job is starting at 8.30 and finishing mm. at 4.30, but uh, would, you, would 9.30 to 5.30 be better for you? And if the, if the uh, company is it different, mm -hmm. then you should always be looking out for your employees because they're gonna be happier. They're gonna, they're gonna like working for you more. Right, and they're gonna be more effective. Yeah, and a lot of times people are working at home too. Right. I mean, the, the, the commute time, the average I think in this country is about 35 minutes, uh, but many people are taking well over an hour to come in and they're exhausted coming in, they're just not feeling good all day, and then they're driving home exhausted, and that's dangerous. That is, yeah, it's so many people falling asleep at the wheel. Mm -hmm. Isn't that one of the number one killers? Yes, mm. more so than driving uh, while intoxicated is driving while exhausted. Exactly. And uh, it would be great if we can measure uh, you know, exhaustion. That, you know, blood. Yeah, it's, it's doable. We should do that. Yeah, it'd be nice as the police, but usually by the time you talk to the police, you're pretty wide awake. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, and um, is it possible to sleep too much? Yeah, yeah sometimes, especially if people are going through depression, yeah. they're sleeping longer than they should be and they're not, they don't want to face the world and they want to stay in bed too right. long. And yes, yeah, people can sleep too long, but generally the challenge we have is that people are not getting enough sleep. Okay. And one way of knowing is, do you use an alarm clock? That's the question I ask everybody. Do you use an alarm clock to wake up? And if they're reporting that they are, then you know that they're not getting enough sleep because whatever time they would wake up in the absence of an alarm clock is how much sleep they need. It's not like a negotiable thing. And then you'll see them often sleeping longer on weekends mm -hmm. to make up for it. And you can never make up for that sleep deficit. You could just get more sleep on those other days. And so right. those other days, Saturday and Sunday, yeah. you feel better. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, when you need to be most sharp and focused and alert during the week for mm -hmm. your job, you're not. And then on the weekends, you're sleeping longer. And you're going to be more on, but you're not performing on those weekends. Right. Oh. It just doesn't make any sense, and if you can just get people to um, to listen to this. I mean, it's lucky that when you see people, they, you said two-thirds of them pick up the habits or use the glasses. Right. Um, is there anything someone can do, I mean, with the hypnosis, because I came to see you, actually mm -hmm. I came to see Jeffrey when I was having sleep problems. I'd wake up in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. as I told you, and um, and you put me into a trance, mm -hmm. and the next day I slept till one third in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. After waking up at like three o'clock in the morning for hours every day. So, um, so I mean, what, if people, as a hypnotist, what, how can you help people with their sleep mm -hmm. issues? Well, in a hypnotic state, when mm -hmm. we're more suggestible, we're more receptive to suggestions, making suggestions that one could just fall asleep fast, sleep deeply, and relax, it's gonna be helpful. Usually I'm gonna make suggestions with the hypnosis that one can shelf the day's concerns, put it away, so they don't have to be thinking about that, and that they could just feel so drowsy, so calm, so comfortable, they can't help but fall asleep and sleep deeply. So it's the power of suggestion yeah. in hypnosis. Um, 
a lot, because a lot of people have a lot of things racing on their mind all right. the time. They're not always negative thoughts. They just because sometimes it could be happy things, you know, a new job, and they're thinking about such wonderful things, or a vacation. Mm -hmm. But usually it's something that's negative, or they're ruminating about something, you know, the past because they're not dealing with those issues during the day. Right. You know, because um, during the day you could have other things that you're doing. You're working. You're playing with your kids. You're with your family. You're on a date. You're dancing. You're doing or watching movies. But then later on, then you want to relax. You want to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You might be tired, but now those thoughts are creeping up. So I help people to be able to control those thoughts to make them more positive, put the day, you know, day's concerns away, and just mm. relax, and help people to cope better during the day with stress, too. Because mm -hmm. if you're coping better during the day, you're going to sleep better at night. That's also a very interesting point, mm -hmm. right? If you don't, if you're not stressed out, you'll mm -hmm. be able to right. calm down at the end of the day easier. That's very good. Um, so tell me, like, when a person comes in and meets with you, would walk me through a session if they say, because um, clearly it worked for me, mm -hmm. but are people, I mean, when they come to you and they say they say that they have a trouble falling asleep, mm -hmm. I mean, you can give them the amber light right. and the glasses. Well, I ask them a lot of questions. Before okay. they even come in, they're given a lengthy intake form via email. Mm -hmm. So I know about their health habits. So I know about... Uh, their caffeine consumption and sugar and exercise and alcohol and water and, um, and, and their sleep habits too. Right. And I go over each one of those things one by one and I, I use as a metaphor uh, with working with every client that an artist working with a piece of clay can mold beautiful pieces of artwork and can make marvelous sculpture. But if that clay is too wet, you don't get things to stick. So that's why I always like to go beyond the tool of hypnosis to help people to achieve their goals. I want to see if there's anything inadvertently act as an impediment to that. So as far as sleep is concerned, I already covered a couple of those things. Eating late at night is not a good thing. Right. Even drinking one drink of alcohol within three hours of going to sleep is not a good thing. It's a sedative. It'll yeah. help knock you out. It's a relaxant. But it's going to make for more wakeful sleep. It's going to interfere with that REM sleep. So you're never going to be as well rested yeah. on one drink, even worse if you have more than one drink. And, then, and that's funny because it does make you tired, but you don't sleep. You not know. going to sleep as well. One right. could be okay, and just more than one, usually it's going to be, it's going to be worse. And uh, also, we're not exercising enough. Two out of three Americans are far uh, deficient in exercising, and uh, that's a problem. You know, we're just like uh, other mammals. We would be naturally, normally moving around all the time. And then mm -hmm. at night, you'd fall asleep. I know for myself, when I sleep the deepest, absolute deepest, is when I got a lot of exercise in. And I exercise every day. Yeah. But I'm talking if I did three hours of swimming in the ocean, that my sleep is just so phenomenal the next day, and, and you feel great.